His name is J it's John Bondi. It is Saturday, September 2nd, and game 47 is finished. And it's one that wasn't on my list to originally do, but it was uh, this Fortnite's Mega Drive challenge, and that is Aladdin for the Mega Drive. Um, yeah, so for those who struggled through my hour and three quarter playthrough video of it. So this is the game I actually have owned since I was a kid. Love the film. And then this is the copy I got, you know, second hand from CB Games, you know, back on the Isle of Wight. Uh, I played, I, I know I completed at least once as a kid. I can't remember if I did more than that, but I can play it again now. Apparently I was still worthy. And I even did it with no continues because they allow you to buy so many lives as long as you collect the gems. So, but yeah, I mean, it still holds up. There are some, uh, like, platforming sections which I think are a bit, mm, and a level where they don't give you any checkpoints, which is also a bit. But otherwise, the whole still an enjoyable game, and so definitely worth picking up. I know they did an Aladdin and Lion King collection, so you can still buy it on, like, um, one console, so. But yeah, uh, enjoyed that, and uh, yeah, next time. So it's Sunday, September 3rd, and game 48 has been finished. It's one that I actually started a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. Um, either way, it's, um, so I went out to Scotland with a family for a family wedding. We were only there for like a week, so sadly no time to try and meet up with people like Gordon and Shu again, which is a bit of a shame, but um, I know my wife would have killed me if I escaped for the day, so. And left her with the kids. But the game in question is the Train, which is a uh, homebrew Game Boy game that I backed on Kickstarter. Um, I showed this off in one of my um, pickup videos a couple of months ago, so it's uh, not too long a game. I think I beat it in like less than four hours, I think. I mean, because uh, it doesn't have a save system, it uses codes. So when you complete certain story elements, you'll get a code so that you come back to it if you have to switch off. But that makes tracking how much time you spent a bit difficult. Um, it's a narrative adventure game, so there is no combat, and the style of it is um, like Link's Awakening on the game. Well, so it's in like top down. Uh, if you've played Game Boy Studio games before, that's Game Boy Studio is what a lot of homebrew devs use to make Game Boy games. And they use like the Zelda kind of Pokemon kind of view. So a lot of games tend to use that. So it's like that and uh, it's about a girl who's helping her granddad to restore a train and then go around an island. And uh, you meet different characters, there are some puzzles to do, but like I say, no combat, there's no failure state. And then it's just going on a train ride and, you know, meeting people and helping with their problems. Yeah, so um, this, when this was kickstarted, there was no digital version, but that's now available on itch, so I'll leave a, if I remember, I'll leave a link in the description, but I can't promise I'll remember that. Because um, I will be doing this, like, who knows how far later when I put all this together into one video. But um, otherwise, if you just Google uh, the train, Game Boy, itch dot io, you'll find it quite easily. So, yep, uh, the train, and uh, yeah, enjoyable experience. So, till next time. It is Thursday, September 14th, and game 49, I've just finished, and it is PsyOps, the Mindgate Conspiracy. So this is a game that was originally released on the PS2, Xbox, and also PC. I played the PC port because uh, uh, it's not available on Steam. The developers eventually made it shareware. They were actually allowing you to download for free from their website, but the website's gone. So um, 
there are a couple of places that now rehost it and have also stripped out the DRM that made it not work with like Windows 10 and Windows 11. So I'll stick a link to where I got it from. Uh, yeah, so, oh, how to describe this game. Product is not yet rated. Captured by a powerful Psy terrorist organization. Your mind. You feel your true self. Has been erased. You fear to trust your own memories. It is time to discover. You have the power to stop the general. Your true self. Engage in strategic combat, where your mind is the ultimate weapon using telekinesis. Pyrokinesis. Mind drain. Mind control. One of IGN's most wanted games of 2004. PsyOps, the Mind Gate Conspiracy. <laughs> it's a third person shooter but also has um like psychic powers as well so kind of like um second sight if you ever played that i guess it's kind of similar to that in different like art style um but it i would say is definitely of that era of gaming and what I mean by that is, yeah, I enjoyed it, but uh, I don't know what it'd be like with a controller. But using keyboard and mouse, one of the main powers it really wants you to use, and I mean some boss battles, you have to use this power and this power only to defeat them, is um, telekinesis. In other words, pick things up and throw things around. Great, except that say if you uh, you have to use the mouse to move to like hold down like the uh, right but uh, right button on your mouse to activate the power and then like pick things up and then you've got to move the mouse and let go to try and throw things and this could be very hit and miss at times and say if you have um, something that you're trying to throw from that say towards you that is really difficult to pull off correctly because there's also an enemy type in the game which um, can't you can't uh, use your other powers against it they've got like special armor it means that you can't mind control them and pick them up and actually because you can use telekinesis to literally pick things up and throw them around but you can't this enemy so you have to if you want to try and kill it easily because they take they're a very spongy enemy is that you need to throw objects at it but that can be quite difficult when say that you know they've left like things around as behind them so you try and pick it up to go and yeah yeah it just that's what I mean about being of that era where they, you know, did very well for that um, generation, but it's something that would be definitely improved if uh, with a later generation of console. Um, so yeah, the controls needed more refinement. So there were times where I was just like, you know, and that is because I was like having to fight the controls to try and do what I needed to do. And there's some annoying gameplay elements as well, like. <sighs> You can't also can't quick save in this game, so you there are checkpoints, and then when you get to that checkpoint, then you you know you save, 
Or if you die, you restart the checkpoint, but if you quit the game, then you didn't save, and anyway. You can probably pick it up quite cheap. It's only eight levels, um, but because of the amount you die, you pro this game took about, like, probably took about 10 hours, maybe. I don't know, it was just... I did have fun with it, but there were also times where, like, I just wanted it to be over. So, take that from, take from that what you will. And, yeah, well, moving on to the next game. So, it is Friday the 15th of September, so the day after the previous game. And that is one that I don't think anyone watching this will have played, or maybe not heard of, but uh, I have completed the Mayor of Sanctuary for the Game Boy. Oh, well, Game Boy Color to be more exact, but um, I'm running off for Easy Flash Junior. Uh, the reason being is that uh, why I say you probably haven't heard of it is because uh, this is a game that I am part of the beta program for, so it's not actually been officially released. Um, I signed up for the Incubate, who are the ones who are publishing it, because they were asked for people to do beta testing, start beta testing for their games, and you get a free ROM if you take part, so I was like, mm, why not? And yes, yeah, the first game that was part of it, and yeah, um, yeah, I quite enjoyed it. Um, I've been playing it over the last like week in the evenings when I've been sat at the sofa, and yeah, I've been enjoying it. So I'll include a trailer somewhere in this. Uh, for the game, so you can see what it's actually like, but it is a um, like an adventure game with some puzzle elements. So you play a retired mayor who is a wizard, and but there has been three weeks of constant night now, and you need to see what the heck is going on, and go and find the new mayor to ask what the hell have you been up to. And there's some puzzles you do along the way to get there. So it's not a very long game. I mean, if you know what you're doing, then you can complete it easily. I mean, if you don't know what you're doing, uh, you can complete it in a couple of hours. Uh, it took me a bit longer because the battery for my um, Easy Junior is a bit high. I need a new battery, so I sometimes lost my save progress, which was a bit frustrating. But yeah, it's. Um, I, I think that the what they've done with the graphics, I think, is very beautiful for the Game Boy Color. Like, um, like the colors for it but yeah um it's currently up for pre-order now if i remember i'll leave a link but yeah it's um new homebrew game boy game and yeah i've been enjoying playing those so give it a try it is tuesday uh the 26th of september and i've just finished game 51 and that is murdered sole suspect on the pc So this is the second game that's been part of the Club 52 um, monthly game club. So it's not a high score challenge or a challenge of any kind, it's more a case of, you know, like a book club, but for games. And uh, all, we, all of us pick three games and they get put in and a randomizer picks the game. So last time we did Fire Shark, which I pictured previously in this video. And the second one was Murdered Soul Suspect. So a game I heard of and I remember being released. I never really had a inclination to play it. Not because I didn't think the series good, but you know, just you know, 
I don't play necessarily a lot of like you know modern games, even though this came out in 2014. So, uh, but yeah, I managed to pick up cheap. So, thanks to uh, Ink Northner for sending me a link to where I could get it cheap for Steam. So thanks for that. And yeah, it's um, it's an enjoyable game. It's like a detective kind of mystery game, like you know, you know who done it kind of thing. So. Uh, you're you're a ghost, and you uh, have to pretty much solve the case while you know in being unable to interact that much with the physical world. So it's a great concept, and it's not too long. My playtime was about like nine hours or so because I was also going for like collectibles and things. So uh, for those who are like like platinum trophies and things, then. Um, it remembers what you've collected, so if you do a second playthrough, you have to get the stuff you missed. So, rather than having to get everything again. Oh yeah, you can also get this quite cheap for like CEX, for example, for like for the various like PS3, 360, and then like the re-releases as well. So, yeah, if it sounds interesting, pick it up. Um, but yeah, it's uh, been published by Square Enix. It's like one of um, I think they're maybe Western Studios that did this because it's not like you know, an RPG or anything, so. But yeah, um, an interesting game and definitely worth checking out and we will, I don't know if this will get put up before it happens, but there'll be another live stream of uh, members of Club 52 talk about it. If I can make it, I will talk about it as well. So hopefully see you then or thanks for tuning in. Anyway. So it is Monday, October 2nd and Game 52 is now finished. Game 52. <laughs> and that is Call of Duty 3 on the PS3. Now, this isn't a game I may have normally have picked. Like um, out of the Call of Duty series, I've played Modern Warfare about a decade ago. Not the remake, the original. And yeah, I enjoyed it. But I was never like, oh, I must always buy like you know, the latest COD. You know, I was a you know, that kind of gamer. But I heard so many good things about Modern Warfare, so then I bought that when it was on sale on Steam at some point, and I was like, okay, you know, let's give it a try, see what everyone's saying about it. It's true. And yeah, I enjoyed it. Not enough to maybe then go buy every single other one because those games really keep their price. So yeah. Anyway, uh, the reason why I picked uh, Call of Duty Three is that um, John uh, Retrokit, who a lot of you in the community um, know and know that sadly he passed away earlier this year. I did not know John that well. Uh, we were in the Club of Fifty Two uh, WhatsApp group together. That's how I actually first got to know John, I didn't know about his channel before then. I may have heard of it, people mentioned RetroKid before then, but uh, not enough so that I would actually then go and see his videos. And he may have, you know, uh, made them more private or delisted them by that point anyway, so. But um, as a fellow member of Club 52, I wanted to honour his memory and like the journey he'd be going on as well with the rest of us. And before he died, he said there were two games that he wanted to play. One of which being, you know, he was planning to play. He wasn't like, you know, Holy Grail games or anything, just like things he tended to play over the course of this year. Uh, one of which big was Call of Duty 3. Uh, another one is, um, I can't remember if he said a specific Zelda game, like Ocarina of Time, or if it was like a Zelda game. So, um, so I decided, and so have several others from the group, have um, also played... Call of Duty 3. So I tend to play this earlier in the year and I just then just uh, my enthusiasm for other games maybe play this first and then as we got later down the list I then thought okay let's finish with you know Call of Duty 3. So here we are. Um, yeah so I have seen some glitches in this game, like uh, for example it's uh, caused my console to th freeze three times, in other words like even pressing the PlayStation button on my controller doesn't do anything, like having to actually press a, the button on the console to switch it off and try again. Two of those freezes were on the last level, 
on the final segment of the game. So, you know, great. <laughs> and, you know, it's a checkpoint system, so you have to redo the previous bits. Also, on that last level, there's a bit where your Sarge kind of just decides to uh, walk through the air to the next section. So I'm not sure what happened there. <laughs> and in some places, like the assets they used seemed like PS2 era. Which is weird, because I took a look on YouTube and like the Xbox Series X version, which I guess maybe they've updated since 2002, whenever this was released. Maybe they've done like a, a higher res version of it, like, like redid the textures. It just seemed weird for a PS3 game to look like that. So, uh, full disclosure, I started this game on normal, got into the first level, uh, got into the first fight, of oh, shoot, uh, shooting fight, whatever, and um, died three times because I could not see who were the Jerry's and who were my own team. Yeah, okay, if you point at your own team, then like a name comes up, but when you're in the heat of battle and literally like it was like there are people everywhere. And I was just like, I'm not enjoying this. So I bumped it out to easy. And I do not care about the fact that I could play this game on easy. I'm not achievement hunting. I haven't like set up a PlayStation account to get achievements. So, um, and there are definitely times during the game where if I had been playing on normal, I know I would have just got really frustrated with it. And I'm, I, I'm a PC FPS guy. So I'm used to keep on a mouse, not having to deal with like moving an analog stick for like aiming the gun and having to wait for it to move at the speed that the analog is going to do it at rather than just be able to just, like quickly do a mouse move. So, and no, not PC Master Race, it's just, you know, um, when I was like growing up, I didn't have the money to like buy um, the brand new consoles, I still play on my Mega Drive, but have the family PC to play Doom, you know, that's what I got used to. So, anyway. So yeah, Call of Duty 3, um, yeah, this wasn't very expensive to buy, and also, fun fact, this is the only Call of Duty game that is actually not available on PC, which is why I paid, uh, got the PS3 version. Every other one, on Steam. This one was well, never ported, I'm not sure what Treyarch were up to at the time, but um, yeah. I mean, it's worth a go, especially if you're uh, looking for some classic COD before I got into like the modern era, so yeah. Uh, regards to Club 52, um, yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's like how many games he'd be in the year. I don't know if I'll do any more of these because I, I, I've hit 52. So otherwise, after this point, I guess it's going to be what I've been playing or beating. So I don't know. But till next time, or, mm, well, I guess another video maybe. Um, well, I hope you've enjoyed this journey and the, um, I like to think of very interesting mix of games like it hasn't just been like the latest releases there's been quite a lot of mix of different consoles you know different genres um and some things which people would never have heard of so yeah it's been a fun journey so yeah i mean i say to everyone if the idea of complete 52 games seems like this like mountain that you can't you know get up uh, scale whatever the phrase is you may surprise yourself yeah, if you're playing the latest releases, you may struggle to do it, but, you know, I had, like, you know, um, Mega Drive and SNES games in there, which some of them don't take long to beat. It wasn't deliberate, it's just, you know, the way it worked out. So, yeah, give it a try. You know, you might surprise yourself. Catch you later.